Good afternoon and welcome to the Douglas County Board of County Commissioners business meeting for Tuesday, January 26th, 2021. It is 1.30 in the afternoon. Would you all please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you everybody and welcome today to kind of a snowy day here in Castle Rock. Commission, um, Mr. Ingalls, do we have attorney certification for everything on today's agenda, please? Yes, Madam Chair, my office has reviewed all items on today's agenda and they all meet legal approval. Thank you, Mr. Ingalls. Do any commissioners have any items to disclose for anything on today's agenda? No. I have none, Madam Chair, thank you. And I have none either. And today we have some employee recognition. Rod Meredith was planning to, oh, this is interesting. He was planning to give credit to one of his snowplow drivers named Randy. But guess where Randy is today? He's out plowing some snow. So <laughs> we are going to have to postpone his um, recognition until the next meeting. So sorry about that. I was prepared with the last memo I had. So with that... I will move to citizen comments. Are there any citizens who have any comments for the commissioners today for anything that is not on the consent agenda or the regular agenda? Troy, is there anybody online who wants to speak with the commissioners? Thank you, Commissioner. I have no hands raised. Thank you, Troy. I'll bring it back to then to the consent agenda. Are there any, any items on the consent agenda that any citizens would like to address? Nobody in the hearing room coming forward. Is there anyone online? Again, no hands raised. Thank you, Troy. I will then bring this back to the board for the consent agenda. Madam Chair, I have a motion to approve the request item A of the consent agenda. And these are minutes of a meeting that Commissioner Teal was not yet a commissioner, so he will be abstaining from this issue. And I will second that motion. There's a first and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 And those abstaining indicate so. Abstention. Thank you, Commissioner Teal. And uh, then there is another motion for some more minutes. Um, commissioner, I move to approve. Uh, Request items, uh, all items, B through V on the consent agenda. Second. First and a second, all in favor say aye on the consent agenda. Aye. aye. Aye, and that motion carries. So we are now moving on to the regular agenda. This is item number A, and this is by Steve Schultz. You're all dressed up in a suit. I've never seen you in a suit before, Steve. You look nice. Well, you're important. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, Board. Uh, I'm here today to present to you an IGA, or let me start again, I apologize. My name is Steve Schultz, I am, I'm resent, representing Community Development. I am the Assistant Director of Parks, Trails, and Building Grounds. And today I'm presenting to you the, uh, an IGA between Douglas County and the Town of Parker um, for the construction of the High Plains Trail. The request is for approval of the IGA between Douglas County in the town of Parker in the amount of $750,000 for the construction of a regional connection to the High Plains Trail. Background information on this. Um, after over 10 years of planning and um, partnership, uh, in 2016, the town of Parker and E-470 Public Highway Authority formed an IGA to construct a regional trail connection to the High Plains Trail. Uh, the plan was to connect the town of Parker, the city of Aurora, Arapahoe County, and Douglas County 
to um, the High Plains Trail. Um, and the town of Parker, Arapahoe County, currently have been contributing to the design effort to this point. Uh, once complete, the connection to the High Plains Trail will connect Douglas County to 40 plus miles of trail along E-470 uh, north um, above the Denver metro area uh, into Adams County. So as you can see, the planning and funding partners for the project include Douglas County, the town of Parker, Arapahoe County, City of Aurora, GOCO, the state of Colorado, and E-470. And originally, um, this was approved in our uh, capital project budget in 2019. Uh, the project has been delayed to this point. So uh, as a breakdown of funding, you can see um, that the Douglas County contribution is roughly 10% of this connection. On this map, you can see in the um, darker green, that is the High Plains Trail that exists, that, that will be uh, connecting into uh, as it stretches north. Um, kind of the lighter green, the north and south, indicates the Cherry Creek Trail, and the east and west is the E-470 Trail. Uh, the dotted red or orange line uh, indicates this trail connection uh, that we will be contributing to. I uh, threw this one in here. This is an overview, uh, a map overview of the intersection at Parker Road and E-470. Now, ideally, uh, direct trail connection from the Cherry Creek Trail could have existed in this area, but over 10 lanes of traffic and an at-grade crossing um, in this area looked to be the solution. And also, we have all the on-ramps and off-ramps that would, uh, we would have to contend with as well. Um, here is the location of the, uh, propo the proposed segment for the connection. It's important to point out that the segment one, which we'll be contributing to, does, is not inside Douglas County. Um, it uh, sits just north of the, the county line, but it connects into the High Plains Trail and then into over to Cherry Creek Trail. Here is a rendering of what the overpass will look like uh, once completed. And you can see it comes, part of the design for this was the um, ADA ramp that you see and why it spins around due to grade, uh, taking into account ADA considerations for the design of this overpass, this pedestrian overpass over Parker Road. Uh, the view that you see here is looking north from Douglas County into Arapahoe County. Uh, staff assessment, uh, Parks, Trails, and Building Grounds staff supports the approval of the 2021 IGA with the Town of Parker for $750,000 uh, for the construction of the High Plains Trail overpass over Parker Road. Um, this concludes the presentation. Uh, with us today is Chris Hudson with the Town of Parker um, to help address any questions that you may have. And I would like to turn it back over to you, Madam Chair for any questions from the board and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. Any questions for Steve? I don't have any questions, Steve, but I just wanna thank you so much for uh, this presentation today and just the, the wonderful impact you've made uh, in Parks. You've been an incredible addition and we just appreciate your service. You've been amazing. So thank you for this. Steve, I do have a question. This part, this trail we're building, you said is not in Douglas County. It is in Arapahoe County. Yes, ma'am. Is that in Parker or unincorporated Arapahoe? Uh, it's in unincorporated Arapahoe County. I have a question for the county attorney on spending county funds for a project not in the county. The only limitation on county funds, whether it be in partnership with another governmental entity or direct, is that it be spent for a public purpose. Thank you. I appreciate that. Would you like to have Mr. Hudson come forward? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Sir, if you could give us your name, spell your last name and your address, please. Hi, I'm Chris Hudson with the Engineering Public Works Department of the Town of Parker. Address is 20120 East Main Street in Parker. Uh, we're excited. I'm, I'm excited to see Steve in a suit, but no. Uh, 
This is a project that uh, the staff member that was planning to be here today that could not, he's been working on this project for over 20 years at the town. And to see it come together this year with funding and uh, if all goes per plan, construction will actually start in the second half of 2021. And we'll see this uh, trail connection come to fruition in 2022. Um, it's exciting because it's gonna be such a uh, important regional trail when it's done. E-470 has currently has a trail built in there right away uh, up to Quincy. They're currently constructing it to I-70 and they have plans to take it all the way north uh, into Adams County. So this is gonna become a great beltway for uh, users that, especially bikers, that if you've seen the Centennial Trail along C-470, the use of that's amazing. This is just a continuation of that great regional amenity. And it's exciting that uh, Douglas County is being part of this team as well. So with that, I'll answer any questions you might have. Would you mind spelling your last name? Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Hudson, H-U-D-S-O-N. I just wanted to make sure, thank you. Any questions for Mr. Hudson? I have one, Madam Chair. Mr. Hudson, thank you for being here with us today and certainly a project that's uh, been in the works for a long time. It's exciting to uh, see it head toward completion. Um, it, I think uh, the chair raises an important question with regard to uh, impact to our citizens who have, are, of course, uh, footing the bill for our contribution. Um, the county attorney indicated that it's appropriate for us to expend funds for public use. Can you, and there was a bit of this in the packet, but can you identify for us the number of our Douglas County residents that would be uh, perhaps favorably impacted based on usage with regard to this trail? We have not done any projections as far as, you know, trail users. Um, you know, I can tell you that the, the, what I would consider the northeast corner of Douglas County would greatly benefit from this. So Parker residents are also Douglas County residents. And, uh, you know, I live in Stonegate. I'm gonna be using it on the weekends if I can. So I, it's as far as a percentage, um, I know 10% of the funding is, uh, is from Douglas County, but I, I have a feeling that more than 10% of the trail users will actually be from Douglas County on this trail. Well, Mr. Hudson, I think you, you nailed my question, which is, you know, proportionality. Certainly, um, if more than 10% of the usage would come from Douglas County and we're spending less than that, then I think that might satisfy my inquiry there. Steve, did you have any additional comment on that? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, I've got a comment uh, for the board. Um, it, being the new guy, it's always really nice to uh, have an issue come before us that I actually know quite a bit about. This is my third exposure to this project. It, I think we saw in the funding that had come before Dr. Cog. Uh, in my prior elected position, I was exposed to it then, as well as with the Dr. Cog sub-regional. And I guess th you could say this is my fourth exposure because uh, also as a member of the E-470 board, I was exposed to the IGA and the contribution by East 470. When we struggled to, it sounds like we really had a lot of concern and we were kind of struggling to, well, how does this benefit the residents of Douglas County? Um, it was explained, I think it was at E 470, but it may have come out at the Dr. Cobb sub regional board that 470 is like a river. For those trail users who are using the Cherry Creek Trail, 470 might as well be the Missouri River in before them. And what this uh, overpass does, uh, it allows them to have that connect between Cherry Creek going north into the other trail systems that I think we see. So there's a hope uh, that I've had expressed to me by uh, members of the Parker Town Council and other Parker residents that, yeah, it's going to bring some commerce in to the northern part of Parker kind of kind of anchor that cost down with uh, sales tax that we can recover um, as a county. But more specifically, it allows our residents that opportunity to make use of the trail system to get north, to, to cross that river of concrete and speeding vehicles, if you will, to actually get up into some of the amenities that, you know, there's a, a segment of our population that wishes to ride a bike or perhaps even hike to. Uh, north of 470. So for that reason, um, Madam Chair, I, I, I heartily support um, this, uh, uh, this agenda item. And if appropriate, I'd like to make a motion at this time. Ashley, we need to take public comment first. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
Uh, Mr. Hudson, that's okay. I was just going to say for the record, that's okay. Um, I got a phone call from one of your council members last night, John Dyack, and he asked me if we would support this because it's very important for the town of Parker. So I just wanted to let you know that you can let your council member know that he, I did what he asked him. What he asked me to do was mention he called. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hudson. So with that, did you have anything else, Mr. Schultz? Thank you. I'm going to open this up for public comment. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to address the board on this topic? Seeing no one come forward, Ms. Dunning, is there anyone online who has a hand raised to address the board on this topic? I have no hands raised. Thank you. Um, with that, I will bring it back to the board for a discussion and or a motion. Madam Chair, I'd like to first make a point of a personal privilege before I uh, offer up the motion, but just uh, again, I think as commissioners uh, in the uh, for Douglas County at the beginning of this year, we continue to benefit from George Teal's many years of experience, uh, and I think our staff and uh, those that we collaborate with have benefited as well. So um, this is in my district, and I've also had some some great uh, conversations over time with council members in Parker, and I know this is important to them. So if it's okay with the board, I'd be pleased to, to offer up a motion. Uh, Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to approve an intergovernmental agreement between the Town of Parker and the Board of County Commissioners for the construction of High Plains Trail in the amount of $750,000. Second. I have a first and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 And that motion carries. Thank you. You can let the town know that we approve this. And Mr. Schultz, I would just like to say you've been on board for maybe six months. Is that right? We have landed some heavy duty things in your lap. Fireworks, um, <laughs> this item, I'm sure there's several others. I, you probably finished building the, um, at Highlands Heritage Park, the stage. Yes. And the building. So thank you for stepping up with just a short amount of, of uh, work. I'm very impressed with what you've done for the county. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item number B, the termination of agreements for Sandstone Ranch. Cheryl Matthews for staff. Good afternoon, commissioners. This is Cheryl Matthews for staff. The item before you this afternoon is terminating agreements on Sandstone Ranch. Uh, if you recall, when we purchased the ranch in 2018, it came with this rural site plan that you see in front of you already approved. And along with that were so many easements for drainage and water wells and, and all kinds of things. So as part of getting our GOCO grant and doing the due diligence, we wish to absolve a lot of those agreements that were given between the developer and themselves and the couple of agreements that were between the developer and the county, such as the open space agreement and a storm drainage easement. So by eliminating those easements, uh, we will get a cleaner title commitment for GOCO to go through their due diligence in order to get our $3.5 million. And then following that, we intend to vacate, go through the process with planning department and vacate this rural site plan and get rid of all these lots. So we won't have 114 lots and all these easements. And, tracts and everything, and so if, if someone looks at the assessor's record, it'll just show sandstone ranch boundaries and, and not all these cluttered lots there. We will not be able to get rid of the easements for Perry Park Water District because they do own some water rights, so they will be retaining some of their easements, um, but they're, they're minimal compared to what they were when they were going to be serving the community. So. Um, with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Questions for staff? Cheryl, Sandstone continues to be such an important priority project for our citizens. Just wanted to thank you for the continued good work on this, and I don't have any additional questions. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. So, um, <clears throat> actually, Cheryl, so, this doesn't do anything to affect the status of sad Sandstone Ranch as a public recreational amenity. All this is doing is cleaning up all that old residential planning. I mean, do I have that correct? Yes, that's correct. It, all it does is just eliminate those easements and, and help clean it up. And then when we vacate the site plan, 
the rural site plan, it will be even cleaner. And so even, uh, even more clear to anybody who might look at this information in terms of platting and everything, that this is, this is actually a, a, a recreational amenity owned by the county, operated by the county. Absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. As um, the only commissioner who was part of the process to actually buy sandstone in 2017, this really highlights to me how commissioners come and go, but staff stays and continue doing the great work. Uh, I remember, Cheryl, when you brought this project to go look at this gorgeous ranch to buy with county open space dollars. And I imagine that you'll be working on this long after I'm term limited. So thank you for your continued interest and excellent work in this project. Thank you, Commissioner. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to address the board on public comment? Seeing no one come forward, Ms. Dunning, is there anyone online? I have no hands raised. Thank you, Ms. Dunning. I'll bring it back to the board then for further deliberation and or a motion. So commissioners, um, I, I'm glad to see this. Uh, this was actually kind of a, uh, a confusing as a resident when this agreement was made to make this purchase. This was confusing for me because I went and I tried to look and I couldn't find a sandstone ranch. All I found was a whole lot of lots. And I think, Commissioner, I actually had a conversation with you all those years ago, and you helped clear that up for me on the process. So for me, you know, you talk about the continuity. It's kind of neat for me to be here to participate in this piece of solving that puzzle for Sandstone Ranch. So, um, Commissioner Layden, if you would, I, I will yield uh, to, make, uh, to make the motion if you'd like to make a comment. Um, I have no further comments. So if you'd like to make the motion, you're welcome to do so. Uh, move to approve termination of agreements for Sandstone Ranch. Second. First and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 That motion carries. Congratulations, Cheryl, and thank you. Thank you very much. Moving on to item number C on the regular agenda. This is a public contract for services and Benjamin Pierce for staff. Is that correct? Yes. That's thank you, correct. sir. Good afternoon, commissioners. <clears throat> have you presented before before us? I have. One, one time, um, I believe it was uh, late last year for the Hilltop Road project. Well, good. Well, welcome back. Thank you. All right. Great. So I'm here, um, again, my name is Ben Pierce, so thank you again for uh, having me here to discuss the project. And um, so on the, you know, what I'm here to discuss today is uh, an approval for Amendment 1 of a professional services agreement with FHU for the County Line Road project. And so as you can see on the um, kind of the title sheet here, the limits of the project are on County Line Road from University Boulevard or State Highway 177 on the east end to Broadway on the west end. So this is in northwest Douglas County. Um, right on the border between Douglas County and Arapaho County. So some key points for the project that we're trying to accomplish. Um, you know, we're providing additional roadway capacity right now. If you've driven through this section before, you'll see that it, it narrows down to one lane in each direction, creating a bottleneck. Um, and so with this reconstruction and widening, we'll be able to increase that roadway capacity. Uh, additionally, there will be a new traffic signal at Clarkson and County Line Road. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in, in a minute, but it will be both a temporary signal that we'll be constructing in 2021 that will be replaced by a permanent signal with the remainder of the project in 2023. Um, and, and we will be improving traffic safety and operations, so having the additional lineage and being able to uh, design the road to be able to meet uh, current roadway standards is a, a point that we're going to be able to um, improve the safety and be able to move people through this part of the county more efficiently. Uh, we'll be improving the roadway drainage system. So right now there's just roadside ditches. And um, with this project, we'll be installing curb and gutter and collecting all that roadway drainage and then also installing a water quality pond um, on the north side of County Line Road. And we'll be providing pedestrian facilities. So right now this is a, a challenging pedestrian 
uh, corridor situation that we have here. And so we'll be putting a sidewalk along the entire north side of the project, connecting the sidewalk that exists near um, University all the way over to Broadway. And then on the south side of the road, we'll be building sidewalk from Clarkson all the way to the east. And I'll, I've got a map in a minute that might clear up some of this stuff a little bit. I'm frowning because I think you're talking about Arapahoe County. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Um, and then so we'll be mitigating additional roadway noise for nearby residents um, because there will be federal money involved in this project. That's one of the um, conditions. So the map um, of this project that we're looking at right here, um, just you know, a little bit zoomed in from what we saw before. So again, we've got the two um, existing traffic signals on the east side here that are going to remain in place. We'll be replacing the signal at the target entrance. So right now that's just a span wire. And then the, the proposed signal will be um, more of a long-term solution with the, um, the, the you know, metal mast arms and everything that decreases maintenance and makes it easier for drivers to see. And then at Clarkson here is the intersection where we're proposing to do a temporary signal. Um, you know, we've been working with CDOT and on getting approval for that temporary signal to be installed. Um, because there's a uh, definitely a safety uh, concern there, mostly with um, left turns onto ca eastbound County Line Road. And then their signal at Broadway will remain in place. So, um, <laughs> as Commissioner Thomas pointed out, the, the sidewalk will be in, in um, uh, Arapahoe County along the north side, and then from Clarkson to the east, the sidewalk will go all the way to University to access um, this pl these plaza businesses. But because we'll have a um, signal with pedestrian amenities at Clarkson, you know, any Douglas County residents who want to continue going west to Broadway can easily cross the road safely at that stoplight and then make their way down to Broadway or vice versa. So a little bit about the schedule of our um, proposed improvements. So the temporary signal at Clarkson Street, um, we're on track to construct this summer. So again, we're working with CDOT on getting those, those kind of final approvals in place. Um, and FHU's design will be completed uh, to about 90% by fall of 2021 to be put on the shelf for a short period of time. Um, and then construction for the project is anticipated in early 2023. And we're thinking because it's such a big project, it'll likely be a, about a two-year construction period. And so the reason for construction in 2023 is primarily based on our funding. Um, and so the uh, we have Dr. Cog TIP funding, which is not available until 2023. So for the design cost of this project, we're looking at um, just a little bit under $880,000 for the total design of the, of the project. The original contract, which was approved, I believe early last year, was for just under $500,000. And so this amendment is basically the rest of the funds for them to finish the design. So this was an intended um, situation where you know, we did not have the, the funding approved for the entire project. And so it was always intended to have this second piece come later, um, which is why, why there's that second amendment for such a um, significant amount of money. And I'd like to point out, too, that the overall design cost is about 4.4% of the estimated construction cost. So despite the fact that it is a, a very expensive design, it's also a very expensive project. And so you know, there's a lot more engineering um, items to consider there. So in the breakdown of the funding, so we're, our estimated construction cost is at $20 million. And so this project was, um, re did receive Dr. Cog TIP funding for about 50% of the project cost at $10 million. And then Douglas County and the City of Centennial are each putting in $4.5 million. And then Littleton, which the, um, the west end of this project is in the City of Littleton, they're putting in $1 million for funding. So with that, the staff recommendation for this project is to approve the amendment um, for the con public contract for services to FHU. And um, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have about the project. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Questions for staff? Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Mr. Pierce, for that presentation. So probably I want to ask you the same question that we were asking with regard to the trail in the previous um, agenda item. When we talk about proportionality, um, can you again go back to the slide that shows the proportion of cost versus the proportion of usage by Douglas County residents? Yes. Okay. And so if our funding amount is 22% of the total project, uh, what again is the total uh, anticipated usage by Douglas County residents? So we don't have any specific, um, to my knowledge, any specific um, 
numbers about how many Arapahoe County residents versus how many Douglas County residents use it. But you know, I, I live um, just across the border in Arapahoe County, and I've got plenty of friends and, and other colleagues that live in Highlands Ranch. And you know, it's such an important thoroughfare for uh, regional or kind of you know, um, I guess sub-regional traffic along County Line Road. So I know residents on both sides definitely get a lot of use out of this. Um, out of this facility, and especially with the increased um, pedestrian accessibility, it definitely helps all of all of users of all abilities in Douglas County and Arapahoe County be able to um, get where they're needing to go. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. I see Mr. Griffiths from staff giving me the eyes. I'm thinking maybe he has some. <laughs> if, wait, if we could just wait and, and see if Mr. Teal has oh, any questions sure, and finish sure. with this witness, please. Probably one of the reasons why uh, Mr. Griffith is out there sweating is because he's remembering the time he pitched this to me as a part of my duties on Dr. Cog. So I do not have any questions because of my prior exposure to this project, but I will be happy to have comments once we hear from the public. Thank you. I don't have any questions for you other than saying thank you. Um, I, like a lot of people, use that stretch, three margaritas and others we go to, and. I am looking forward to people not trying to cut me off and whip in front of me and cause crashes in there. So this is going to be a great safety project. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Mm -hmm. Mr. Griffith. I was just going to add that um, the majority of the shop. Would you mind saying your oh, name yeah. for the record? Art, Art Griffith, Douglas County Engineering. Um, Commissioner Layden, most of the shoppers shop on the south side. So 90% of the commercial use is for businesses on the south side. And the, the traffic probably is closer to a 50-50 split. Okay, thank you, Mr. Griffith. I thought you might have the answer to that specific question for Mr. Pierce, thank you. Did you have anything else? Um, I think that, no, I, I think the next two presentations are from me though as well. I do. Okay, so. let us finish this item and okay. then we'll call you back up. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. Did you have any other questions for Mr. Griffith? No, ma'am, I'm ready to go to public comment. Okay. I'll open this up for public comment. Are there any citizens or any residents in the room who would like to talk about this item? Seeing no one come forward, I'll ask Ms. Dunning, is there anyone online who would like to discuss this item? Thank you, Commissioner. I have no hands raised. Thank you. I will close public comment and bring it back to the board. Uh, I didn't have any questions, and I mentioned prior exposure. Um, Mr. Griffith actually pitched this to me a couple of years ago when we were going through the tip cycle at Dr. Cog. And our, your, I, I joked about you uh, sweating because you, you, it was a pretty hard pitch and not well received at the time. One of the things that brought me around to this project and the value that it is going to bring Douglas County, though, is it became, it became a unique uh, opportunity for us to partner with Centennial, with Littleton, with the Arapahoe County team, actually, in order to bring, well, really, a couple of different projects together, this being one of them. Unlike you, Commissioner, I, I hadn't spent a lot of time on County Line Road in years and years. Um, however, uh, over the course of the last year, yeah, I, I did have many questions pertaining to when are we going to widen County Line and, and complete what this project does uh, brought to my attention. And uh, luckily, I knew that answer went out on the campaign trail. So um, I absolutely do support this uh, this project. I am in favor of this uh uh, this agenda item in order to award the contract and proceed forward. So Art, by the way, it's great to see you with a beard finally. Good to see you came around, pal. But um, uh, you can stop sweating. You convinced me years ago and I'm glad we're uh, moving forward. Thank you, Commissioner Teal. I think it was um, great that you pointed out that um, like the other project, um, this is one of the few projects where it crosses into multiple sub-regions because all of the money in um, Centennial came through the Arapaho sub-region. So it shows great collaboration and we're sure that Rod's equally pleased that they'll be responsible for moving the snow on the north side's sidewalk. <laughs> Thank you. Any comments? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. No, I think it's important to highlight the wonderful regional collaboration that we continue to have, and I thank Mr. Griffith for uh, his leadership on that level. I do see a public use and will be in support as well. 
Thank you. I support this. Uh, Commissioner Teal brought up driving on County Line Road. Uh, when I was a state trooper in Douglas County in 1984, Art shaking his head because he knows that County Line Road was like a roller coaster. And I actually caught air in my patrol car running hot to an injury accident one time. I learned a lot about County Line Road that evening. Um, and I too will be in support of this uh, agenda item and I'll be looking for a motion. That's a great story. Um, I will make a motion, Madam Chair, to approve a public contract for services with Felsberg, Holt, and Ulevig Incorporated for completing final design on the segment of County Line Road from University Boulevard to Broadway in the amount not to exceed $878,680, project file CI-2020-013. Second. First and a second, all in favor say aye. 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 aye, and that motion carries. Thank you. We will move on to item number D which is a public contract for services with HDL Engineering. Again, Mr. Pierce for staff. Thank you again. And let me pull this up here. All right, so uh, thank you, Commissioner. The, so this project is um, the Havana, Meridian, and Lincoln project is how we've been describing it. So CI 2020-040. Uh, and as you can see from um, this on the, in the title slide here, the overall plan is to realign Havana Street and um, Meridian Circle here so that Havana Street becomes the through movement to the west leg of Herid Meridian Boulevard and then Meridian Boulevard on the east leg tees in. So, in taking a step back for the competitive consultant selection process we used on this project, so five firms were selected from our Douglas County shortlist um, and asked to submit proposals. And of those five firms, uh, all five you know submitted, and so we received them and scored them. And of the five firms, HDR received the highest score um, out of the three evaluators who uh, reviewed and scored the proposals. And just a, a little bit more, you know, diving a little deeper on it, they were ranked number one by all three of the evaluators. Um, they had the highest combined technical score, and they had a competitive fee. And for this project, we did a sealed envelope fee so that we did all of the technical scoring before we looked at anybody's um, fee that had been submitted. And overall, HDR has been, um, you know, excellent to work with, with past performance on CDOT, local agency projects, and a few projects here in Douglas County. So then getting into the project itself a little bit more, um, th this one will have a phased construction schedule. So um, phase one of the construction of the project, which you know, we're anticipating beginning this year, is to install uh, retaining walls on the west side of the project, along with a portion of the pedestrian underpass structure that will go under the west leg of Meridian. Um, again, I've got a map on the next page that'll <laughs> clear some of this up a little bit. <clears throat> But the main reason for doing the split phase construction is to really facilitate the utility relocation. So there's a lot of utilities for this business park. Um, and because of the significant realignment and where the road is going to be changing, where the intersection is, um, a lot of the utilities that are there can't remain in the place that they are. And so the ability to relocate those utilities before the majority of the construction happens allows the construction to um, go a lot easier and avoid those conflicts with both um, the private utility owners and then also Meridian Metro District owns um, a fair portion of those utilities. So then phase two of the construction, which would begin in 2022, is really to construct the remaining project elements and replace the 34-year-old pavement that is out there at this intersection. Um, similarly, this project will improve traffic safety and operations. Um, you know, again, if you've driven this, uh, this section of road before, you might have noticed that it, it's a little bit strange to drive through and it's a little bit confusing. And I know I've, I've had that, um, you know, that feeling the first couple times I drove through it as well. So this will be a lot more in line with other intersections that we've built in Douglas County um, and more in line with, uh, you know, current roadway geometric standards. Um, and, uh, you know, the compatibility with future construction. So, uh, you know, it's been identified that there is a need in the future for a third left turn lane to go from eastbound Lincoln Avenue to northbound um, Havana Road, or Havana Street, rather. And um, so this uh, design will be able to accommodate that widening um, when it happens on Lincoln Avenue. 
And then um, also, it'll be designed to accommodate the future Ridgegate East development that'll be happening just on the south side of Lincoln Avenue at this location. So then there'll be uh, lanes to go across Lincoln Avenue, you know, for people in the business park, perhaps going to get lunch or something to be able to um, go over there to the Ridgegate East um, development. So here's the map that shows, uh, you know, a little bit more specifically what the intersection is going to look like. So there will be a signal here at this T intersection. Um, and so again, going back to explaining maybe the reason why we're reconfiguring it the way we are is, you know, currently, if you go on Havana, you have to make either a left turn to go on the west leg of Meridian Boulevard, or there's a free right, whereas in the proposed condition, um, you know, that free right to be able to easily go eastbound is still there, and then the through movement, which will be more efficient without having to make a left turn um, for traffic coming from Lincoln going west on Meridian Boulevard. And then just to go back about the uh, phasing, so these are the retaining walls that I was discussing and the pedestrian underpass structure here. So the idea is either in the backfill of this retaining wall or potentially out in front is where we'll be relocating the utilities to. And so that's the reason for constructing those portions of the project as part of phase one. And then the, basically the rest of the project um, will be constructed as part of phase two in 2022. And to discuss the project funding partners a little bit, so Denver South Transportation Management Association um, with Southeast Public Improvement Metropolitan District, also known as SPIMED, um, is in for $2.65 million. Meridian Metropolitan District, who's another partner on this project, um, is putting in $375,000. And then uh, the anticipated contribution from Douglas County is $5,475,000. So how that relates to the project costs, is we're looking at a final design cost of $365,000, which again is about 4.6% of the estimated construction cost, um, which we are anticipating based on conceptual design to be about $8 million. So with that, the staff recommendation is for approval of a public contract for services with HDR um, to complete final design of this project. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Questions for staff? I have no additional questions for staff. Thank you. I'll just tell you that I will be really glad when you get this intersection done because every time I go up there, I get in the wrong lane <laughs> and I end up, and I'm not the only one. So this will be real, this is a really good project, Mr. Pierce. So thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak on this item? Not that I'm aware. Art's not here to back you up on this one. <laughs> No. Okay, great. I'm going to open this up then for public comment. Is there anyone here who would like to address the board on this topic? Seeing when no one come forward, Ms. Dunning, is there anyone online to discuss this with the commissioners? I have no hands raised. Thank you. I will close public comment and bring it back to the board for deliberation. Um, so First of all, I'm glad to see this because I had a doctor's office that was in that area, and yeah, I always got in the wrong lane too. Uh, so, need to finally be here when we take steps to fix it. And I would agree with that. I have no additional comments on this one. I'll go ahead and make the motion to approve a public contract for services with HDR Engineering Incorporated for final design of the Havana Meridian Lincoln Improvements Project in the amount not to exceed $365,000 project file is CI 2020-040. Second. Okay, we have a first and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, and that motion passes. And we have one final item today with Mr. Pierce. This is a public contract for services with AECOM Technical Services, Inc. Did you draw the short staff, the short straw? These are just my project. Okay. <laughs> and I'm happy to be here. Okay, we're happy to have you. <clears throat> so the, the third and final presentation that I have today is for um, an approval of a professional services agreement with AECOM for the Bayou Gulch Road project. So this, the project boundary is from uh, Pradera Parkway up to Scott Avenue. So this project is located um, just south of Parker between 
um, State Highway 83 on the east side and then Crowfoot Valley Road on the west side. And so there's been significant development in this area. And so these blue lines up at the top here show future or under construction roads that are being built by developers currently. And so that'll be the extension of Bayou Gulch Road, which will go all the way up to Crowfoot Valley Road. And then um, Scott Avenue is also being extended to this intersection. So by the time we go to construct this project, it's uh, intended that these roads in blue will already have been built. And so then our project is really just um, from Perdera Parkway up to that future intersection at Scott Avenue. So the selection, the consultant selection process we used on this project was similar to other projects. We selected five firms um, from the Douglas County shortlist to submit proposals, and uh, all five proposals were received and scored by the evaluation committee. Uh, and of the five firms, AECOM received the highest score from the three evaluators. Uh, they had, uh, similarly, they had the highest technical score, um, and they also had a very competitive fee. So, um, you know, AECOM has performed some work for us in the past, and they've, they've been excellent to work with, and they also have a very good reputation with CDOT and other local agencies. So this project will also be phased construction, but in a little bit different way. So um, this project from Pradera Parkway up to Vistancia, which is about halfway through the project, there's already a road, a paved road that exists there. And so it's one lane in each direction. And then um, it's just a dirt road from Vistancia Road up to Scott. And so the phased construction for this project is really about looking at what the final configuration in the Douglas County 2040 transportation plan in, which is two lanes in each direction. But the traffic volumes based on the amount of development and traffic that is out there right now doesn't, um, doesn't require that, ma that many lanes. And so the phased construction will be to build just the northbound portion of the final configuration and then have one lane in each direction on that. So the, the ultimate configuration will be two lanes in each direction with bike lanes on the outside and a raised median in between. Um, the next slide ha will have a graphic that'll maybe help clear it up a little bit. Um, so yeah, so as I said, the you know um, building Bayou Gulch Road over, there's essentially a dam structure that the road currently goes over. So on the west side of that is um, Scott, uh, Scott Gulch Regional Detention Facility. And so a big part of the reason for looking at this project is in the 100 year storm event, there is some um, drainage uh, infrastructure there in place, but the 100 year storm event will actually fill up to the level of the roadway and then spill over the existing roadway um, to be able to mitigate that to avoid flooding homes in the, uh, in the nearby development. And so obviously for, um, for the long term use of this as a public roadway, we'll need to investigate uh, ways in order to handle that storm flow without it just spilling over the roadway, which is an important part of this project. Um, and then there'll be a, a closed stormwater drainage system with curb and gutter on um, Bayou Gulch Road, and we'll be constructing sidewalks and multi-use paths. So this project will have a five-foot detached sidewalk on the northbound side, uh, which will be built as part of the interim configuration. And then with the ultimate configuration, there'll be a 10-foot uh, multi-use path on the west side. So I'll try to clear up some, <laughs> some of what I just said here with this graphic. Um, so this is uh, up top is our typical section that we have intended for the road. And so this is looking north. You've got the two, um, they've been showing up very well, um, the two northbound lanes that in the ultimate condition will both be going northbound with a bike lane and then kind of the same configuration on the southbound side. Um, but what's out there right now, so this is a picture standing at Vistancia, so basically in the middle of the project looking to the south. And so here on the left, you'll see the five foot sidewalk and then the one lane in each direction. And so as part of this project, um, we'll actually be widening this portion of the roadway a little bit to add some shoulders and to match the ultimate configuration that we're gonna have from Vistancia up to Scott Avenue, which will account for some shoulders that in the ultimate condition will um, be striped as bicycle lanes. So from this picture that you can see down here, um, thinking about what the ultimate configuration is going to look like is, you know, there will be a raised median here and then two more lanes 
just past it for the southbound direction. So then instead of this being a yellow stripe, this will be two, two lanes going the same direction as opposed to one lane in each direction. So the schedule for this project, um, as I mentioned earlier, the developer is currently building the roads of Scott Avenue and Bayou Gulch Road north of our project limits as part of those commitments um, to the county. Um, and our schedule for this project, AECOM will complete design by fall of 2021 with the interim configuration being constructed in early 2022. So we don't necessarily have a sense of when the ultimate configuration will need to be built. Um, we just know that based on the, the near term volumes for the roadway and for the current build out of those developments, that those additional lanes are not currently needed. But by 2040, we anticipate them being needed. And so as part of that, um, to prepare for that ultimate configuration with the construction, one of the things we will be doing is preparing as much of the, um, the embankment for the future condition as possible to make it as easy as possible to go back and pave those two southbound lanes. So on the, the south portion of the project from Pradera Parkway to Vistancia Road, there is going to be some um, right away concerns for the ultimate configuration that we're going to be investigating in terms of looking at retaining walls and, and future right-of-way needs, but um, the rest of the project, we are going to build as much embankment as possible. And so then the funding situation for this project, we're looking at a design cost of $336,000, which is about 10% of the estimated construction cost, um, and the construction cost is estimated to be three and a half million. So part of the reason why this 10% is a little bit higher than the two previous um, presentations I gave really has to do with a lot of the hydraulic analysis and the um, infrastructure for that um, Scott Gulch Regional Detention Facility that is sort of increasing how much um, how much engineering needs to be done in order to make sure that we um, are not going to be putting ourselves in a um, poor hydraulic situation and flooding the road and things like that. So with that, the staff recommendation is to approve a public contract for services to AECOM for the Bayou Gulch Road Improvement Project. So I'd be happy to answer any questions about the project. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Questions for staff? Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Just wanted to say, uh, appreciate the, uh, the, the presentation. You've done triple duty today. Uh, I don't have any specific inquiries, just a wonderful project and amenity for this neighborhood. Thank you. So going back to one of your earlier slides, mm -hmm. it, it, am I given to understand this was actually not the lowest bid on this project? Uh, correct, yes. So um, one of the things that, that we do in the capital improvements group, and we found better luck with um, looking for uh, a best value. So we look at a, a technical score in addition to just the fee. So in, on this particular project, I believe there was uh, 15 points awarded for the, um, the fee of the project and then 85 points for the technical proposal. And, um, and as I mentioned in, in a previous slide, the AECOM did have the highest technical score, um, even if their, their score for the fee was, was not quite as high, the technical score made up for it. Um, and again, you know, two out of the three evaluators um, ranked them at number one, and then the third evaluator ranked them at number three, but with the highest overall technical score. Okay, so, but the fee, you, you do say that the fee was competitive as compared to the other bidders? Yes, it was. All right. So we're, we're looking to pay for uh, kind of the, you, you pay for what you get kind of scenario where we believe that, yeah, it's not the lowest fee that was, competitive fee that was put forward, but we're going to get a little bit more for it. Um, yeah, so... Um, yeah, exactly what you said about, you know, you, in this case, you often get what you pay for. Um, just having the lowest fee and going with that consultant um, often leads to situations where you have to do change orders and you have to add more money for things that maybe weren't accounted for. And that's why one of the reasons we really focus on the technical score is because when, when we know that the consultants understand the technical aspects of it, we find that their, the fee that they have is usually much more accurate and much more closer to what we end up needing to complete the project. Okay, makes sense. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Um, you used a street called Vincentia. Yes. What development is that in? Um, that is, you know, I don't know uh, what development. I'm not sure if it's in that Pradera. 
it's the Vistancia development. <laughs> so it's oh. just across from Perdera. So Perdera development is on the west side. Okay. Um, and so then the Vistancia development is really just kind of north of Craftsman Drive um, and then east of Bayou Gulch Road. And this is west of Parker Road? Yes. Okay. So if you follow the future Bayou Gulch Road straight north, eventually it'll intersect Crowfoot Valley Road, which has gone kind of a diagonal. And then if you take Bayou Gulch Road to the south, it turns and goes uh, and becomes eastbound, and that's where it will connect to Parker Road further south. And the dark blue ink, is that Scott Road? Yes. So Scott Avenue is the east-west road on the north side there. Um, and then the future Bayou Gulch Road that's under construction by the developer is the continuation with that green, that okay. blue line. And so what you're asking f to do now is to build the north and the southbound lanes in the northbound lanes. Mm -hmm. And then in 2040, the southbound lanes will be added. So then there will be two northbound lanes and two southbound lanes. Correct. So going back to this, um, this diagram here, Basically, that what we're showing here is the ultimate configuration. We're just going to be building this half right now and putting both north and southbound lanes on it. But as much of this um, kind of uh, embankment that we can build to prepare for the future, we will as part of the project. Great. I don't have any other questions for you. Did you want Mr. Griffiths to speak also? Um, Art Griffith for engineering staff. Um, this is also part of... Um, an agreement that we made with Parker, the town of Parker, to complete this segment up to Scott Road. And then our developers um, on the east side, north of Scott Road, are responsible for building half the, the future two lanes, or the north half of the future four lane road. And then the town is responsible for all the other parts of this road that will stand up and extend to Crowfoot Valley Road. So at the completion of this project in about 2023, you ought to be able to take Bayou Gulch Road all the way to Crowfoot and head up and then eventually continue Bayou Gulch, then changes names to Chambers um, Road at Crowfoot Valley Road. So it's part of the overall major uh, arterial network um, and it's part of a, an agreement that we made with uh, uh, town of Parker to do this segment and they would do all the other segments to the north. Thank you, Mr. Griffith. Any questions for Mr. Griffith? I have none. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have anything else, Mr. Pierce? I do not. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to open this up then for public comment. Any public comment from anyone in the room? Seeing no one come forward, Ms. Dunning, is there anyone online? I have no hands raised. Thank you. I will, pl I will close public comment and bring it back to the board for deliberation and or a motion. Madam Chair, I have a motion to approve a public contract for services to ACOM Technical Services Incorporated for final design of the Bayou Gulch Road in the amount not to exceed $336,000. Project file CI 2015-010. Sounds like a good deal. I'll second. First and the second, all in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, and that motion carries. You were successful today, Mr. Pierce. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the county manager re had submitted a report that was part of the packet. Do any commissioners have any comments? I do have a comment, Madam Chair, if I could just pull up my screen here. So uh, it really thrilled with the, the hard work uh, of our county manager and staff and certainly this board around our COVID-19 recovery. I just wanted to remind everyone that may be listening that uh, Douglas County is doing a blood drive on Thursday, February 4th to make a positive impact in the new year. Uh, certainly folks that have had COVID-19 have the antibodies and can provide plasma that can help people that are currently hospitalized with COVID-19. So encouraging people to come out for that blood drive Thursday, February 4th from 10 to 3.30 p.m. Thank you, Commissioner Layden. In the staff report, the, oh, let's start over, the county manager report, there was some really great information there about open space. And this just shows how extensive our open space program is that last year in 2020, there were over 700,000 visitors for the first time. The usage went up significantly. Dawson Butte saw an increase of 82%. 
Hidden Mesa saw a 66% increase. Lincoln Meadows saw an 86% increase. Sharp Tail, 144% increase. Spruce Mountain saw a 92% increase. Sandstone Ranch was officially opened to the public on September 19th of 2020. So in three months, there were about 81,000 visitors. And um, so staff expects that will increase 12% a year. So next year, we'll see how close they were to that. But that just shows you part of the reasons why Douglas County residents are the healthiest in the state and the second healthiest in the country because they know how to take good care of themselves. So thank you with that. This adjourns today's business meeting and the public um, land use meeting will commence at 2.36 in five minutes.